Dear ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to ponder the following facts. Since 1973, when the Arabs started increasing the price of oil and collecting billions of dollars in revenue, they invested enormous amounts in building mosques all over the non-Muslim world in numbers that are rivaling the number of churches. Of course, these mosques are not used for truly spiritual religious purposes because, as I have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Muhammadan Islam is a cult belief system and most definitely not a religion. Moreover, Islam has no concept of spirituality, otherwise their so-called martyrs, actually cowardly mass murderers, would not have believed in an afterlife full of sexual, carnal and physical pleasures in Muhammad's whorehouse version of paradise. Spirits, as far as I understand, do not fornicate, eat or drink. Mosques are invariably used to indoctrinate future generations of would-be mass murderers to fulfill their publicly and crystal clearly declared purpose in life to Islamize the whole of humanity, that is, to bring down humanity to the sewer level of Sharia. I would like to remind you that Ummat Muhammad, the followers of Muhammad, are only 20% of humanity, while we, Ummat al-Kuffar, or the nation of infidels, constituting all Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, Zoroastrians, Jews, animists, atheists, agnostics, etc., that is, all those who do not believe as Muslims do, are 80% of humanity. Moreover, Umad Muhammad of 1500 millions is the least productive, inventive or creative in human history, doing its worst to subjugate, terrorize and or exterminate 5000 millions of Ummat al-Kuffar, who are by far the most productive, inventive, creative and powerful in human history. Tragically, most of the Western leaders have jellyfish backbones more willing to submit than to stand up and be counted. Having set the benchmark of where the two groups stand, let me explain to you what the causes of Muslim rage are. To start with, Umad Muhammad is prohibited by Muhammad's Quran and Sunnah. Sunnah meaning Muhammad's behavior, thoughts and deeds from ever enjoying life. Unbelievable as this may sound, let me share with you the following. They are prohibited from dancing, singing, playing musical instruments, having consensual sex, sculpting or painting human or animal forms, drinking wine, gambling, reciting poetry, wearing gold or silk, having any friends other than Muslims, not hating all humans who do not believe as they do, not treating females of the human species like domestic animals, etc. Ladies and gentlemen, try to visualize what would happen to your own psyche if all the above were forced upon you. I have no doubt that each and every one of you would turn into a zombie, the living dead. That is why the male followers of Muhammad boast that Christians and Jews love life, while they love death. Is it too much to understand the warped and indoctrinated mind of a would-be martyr who looks forward to receiving after death each and every single prohibited item in life for eternity? Male Muhammadan Muslims are always in rage, irrespective of nationality, color, race or culture, because each and every one of them is a product of exactly the same depraved Sharia indoctrination. They are in reality angry and frustrated with their own miserable existence from which they are not allowed to escape because they would be slaughtered by their very loving kith and kin for apostatizing. You see them demonstrating in different countries, be they from Pakistan, Afghanistan, London or Denmark, invariably with hate-filled and contorted faces, shouting their peace-loving terror verse, Allahu Akbar, praying for the blood of Christians, Jews, Hindus, 
Buddhists and others. Muhammadan Muslims are the only human group who show their anger by always holding their alleged holy Quran in one hand and weapons of death and destruction in the other. It is important to point out that more Muslims are actually butchered by other Muslims than by any other human group, especially during their so-called holy month of Ramadan. They are so demonic that they are literally the only people who destroy mosques and slaughter other Muslims while shouting Allahu Akbar. Where in all the above do the left-wing liberal media, academia and politicians find peaceful Islam? I have not been able to find out unless they are in bed with Islam or are abysmally stupid. Either way, they are traitors because they are aiding and abetting the enemies of all humanity. Muslims are angry when unbelievers defend themselves against their acts of wanton aggression. Muslims are angry for any perceived insult to Islam while they do not hesitate to abuse, slight and slur the beliefs of all other human beings. Muslims are angry if one makes a cartoon of Muhammad, but they do not hesitate at all from portraying other human beings as monsters and bloodthirsty aggressors. Muslims are angry if their Quran is burnt, but are more than happy to torch priests and churches or blow up temples or put fire to synagogues. Muslims are angry when their mass murdering thugs are killed in self-defense and instead of being ecstatic at the prospect of joining their alleged 72 virgins, Muslims show incredible rage. Why are Muslims so upset if the alleged martyr is dying for the sake of Allah as he is supposed to do? Why not celebrate instead? Is it because even in the warped recesses of their indoctrinated minds, they know that the 72 virgins are a myth? In short, Muslims are angry because we, Ummat al-Kuffar, exist. Full stop. Dear listeners, I would like you to carefully ponder the following facts. Every single male believing or fundamentalist Muhammadan Muslim exhibits almost identical psychological characteristics irrespective of nationality, race, color, culture or tradition. They demonstrate an obscene degree of hypocrisy, mendacity, racism and unwarranted arrogance, compounded with a pathological and depraved indifference to reality, facts, mercy, compassion, friendship, loyalty, sincerity, morality, justice or language. They are, like their mentor Muhammad before them, hate-mongering, war-mongering, racist, misogynist, vile and hence most certainly ungodly. Those of you who may feel offended with such strong adjectives, please do us all a favor by refuting or disproving anything I reveal. While we in the West are tolerant of other cultures and beliefs, Muslims are utterly intolerant since Sharia treats all other human beings as inferior creatures because we do not believe as they do. Finally, please listen carefully to the following words of pure wisdom and logic that our criminally negligent politically correct leaders have not yet understood. If we extend unlimited tolerance even to those who are intolerant, if we are not prepared to defend a tolerant society against the onslaught of the intolerant, then the tolerant will be destroyed and tolerance with them. We should therefore claim, in the name of tolerance, the right not to tolerate the intolerant. This was mentioned by Karl Popper.